Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to give you information on the newest oral drug for the treatment of COVID infections called Paxlovid that's been developed by Pfizer. Pfizer announced on November 5th that using Paxlovid cuts COVID hospitalizations and deaths by 89%, which is an impressive statement. Let's dig into the data a bit more. Paxlovid is an antiviral that works by stopping an enzyme called protease that's needed to cut viral proteins into their final and usable form. Paxlovid prevents the protease from doing its job so the virus can't create functional copies of itself. So Paxlovid is in a class of medications called protease inhibitors. And the good news is that protease inhibitors have been used for decades in the treatment of HIV and hepatitis C. They're even being used to treat some cancers. So we have a track record with these types of medications. But in order to ensure the liver does not break Paxlovid down and render it ineffective before it does its job, Paxlovid must also be combined with another protease inhibitor called ritonavir. Ritonavir blocks the liver enzyme called cytochrome P450 that would chew up Paxlovid prematurely. It's often used in HIV combinations to help protease inhibitors work more effectively. To gather its data, Pfizer enrolled 1,219 patients from sites in North and South America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Recruitment started July 2021 and ended at the end of September. Patients received either placebo or Paxlovid plus ritonavir twice a day for five days. Of those patients that were treated with Paxlovid and ritonavir within three days of symptom onset, three out of 389 were hospitalized and there were no deaths. The group that received a placebo pill had 27 out of 385 that were hospitalized and seven subsequent deaths. If patients were enrolled within five days of symptom onset, the results were similar, with six out of 607 hospitalized while using the medicine versus 41 out of 612 hospitalized with 10 subsequent deaths in the group of patients that received the placebo. Pfizer specifically chose unvaccinated patients that were at higher risk for complications from COVID, and they're currently running ongoing studies in patients that are vaccinated and at lower risk and as a preventative medication for patients exposed to COVID to see if Paxlovid plus ritonavir will also benefit them. The side effects in both the placebo and Paxlovid group seem to be similar, although the data was scant on specifics. Pfizer has applied for FDA authorization of Paxlovid and reached a deal with the U.S. government to provide up to 10 million courses of the drug for a cost of $5.3 billion, which means that a five-day course of the medication will cost about $530 and it will be interesting to see how insurance companies and the government decide to cover this cost. And because the release data has been on higher risk patients, those that are unvaccinated and have another risk factor like obesity, it'll be interesting to see who the FDA approves the medication for and if they limit its use to this higher risk group only. Pills for the treatment of COVID continue to be a welcome addition in the arsenal to treat COVID infections outside the hospital. The portability and convenience of the treatments make them much more accessible than the IV treatment with monoclonal antibodies. But the key is starting the treatment early, preferably within the first three to five days after symptoms, and this continues to depend on access to early and reliable testing. Having to wait two to three days for a PCR test result to return just simply can't continue if we plan to use this oral medication effectively. Furthermore, the pill does not target anything on the spike protein, which as we have seen, seems to be the spot where lots of mutations occur in SARS-CoV-2 and can possibly cause resistance to our current vaccines. So hopefully this will mean less resistance with Paxlovid, but of course, we'll just have to wait to see if this is true. And lastly, because ritonavir affects the cytochrome P450 system in the liver, this means that it also causes interactions with lots of other medications. Doctors and patients will have to be vigilant about knowing which medications should not be used with ritonavir. Medications such as statin cholesterol drugs, 
hormonal birth control such as the pill, patch, or ring, and drugs used for pulmonary hypertension and erectile dysfunction are just a few of the medications that can interact with ritonavir. If you plan on taking the Paxlovid plus ritonavir combo, please learn what medications you're currently taking that can interact with them. The good news is that the course is just for five days, so your doctor may decide to have you just hold a drug or lower or increase the dose while you're taking ritonavir. Thanks for joining me.